Tonight we're debating whether the people should ratify the fiscal treaty and with us are the Fianna Fáil leader Michal Martin, the Fianna Gael director of elections Simon Coveney, they're both on the yes side, and on the no side Sinn Féin deputy leader Mary Lou Macdonald and Socialist Party leader Joe Higgins. You can follow the debate live on the website and on Twitter. We invite you to send us your comments via tweets to Ashford B or send us a text at 53131, place the word tonight before I comment, or send us an email at tonight at tv3.ie. We'll deal with the texts and tweets and emails on the Tonight programme, which follows at 11 p.m. <coughs> We're going to start the programme this evening by asking each of the participants tonight a simple question, and we invite them, or we ask them, to keep their uh, answer to just one minute, as we ask them to keep all their answers to in the course of the programme to just one minute. And we start with Joe Higgins. Joe, what is the single Trump argument why people should vote no to the fiscal treaty? That if the austerity treaty was passed and implemented in 2015, it would mean cuts of 5.75 billion euro to meet the structural deficit target and a further cut of up to 5 billion to meet the debt reduction target. That would mean a dramatic increase in household and water taxes, a dramatic further attack on people's living standards and would destroy an economy that is already deeply damaged by austerity. So a no vote would be a massive rejection of these dreadful austerity policies a rejection of further burdens on ordinary people like home and water taxes and a demand for a radical change to end austerity and to instead have major public investment to create jobs and a future for our people and I believe that it would amount also to a demand for a financial system that instead of serving the private profits of bondholders and billionaire bankers it would serve ordinary people and society in public ownership and democratic control. OK, Simon Coveney, what is the single decisive Trump argument in favour of voting yes? Well, this is a, a treaty which will be good for Ireland. Uh, it will uh, assist uh, in helping us to rebuild an economy and rebuild a country, which is what's underway at the moment. Uh, this will provide the stability and the certainty uh, to help us do that. This treaty isn't going to solve all of Ireland's problems, not by a long shot, uh, but what it will do uh, is two things. First of all, it will commit Ireland and another 25 member states in, in the European Union to responsible budgeting in the future to ensure that we don't get into the kind of mess that we're in at the moment again, uh, to ensure that countries only spend uh, what they can afford to spend. Uh, and also, uh, uh, it will allow Ireland to access what's called a European stability mechanism, which is a rescue fund, essentially, of 700 billion euros that the European Union collectively have agreed to put in place uh, for fragile economies that are trying to recover and if they need to access uh, stability funds, in other words, if they're not able to raise their own finances, uh, that there will be this insurance mechanism that they can access. Uh, and so those two measures will provide certainty, stability and a platform for investment and growth in Ireland that will contribute significantly uh, to rebuilding our country. Mary Lou, uh, the, in your opinion, the single decisive uh, Trump argument for voting no? Because, Vincent, we can't afford it. We can't afford the almost six billion in additional cuts that this would entail from 2015 onwards. We can't afford to persist with the strategy that has the domestic economy in a heap, that has almost half a million people out of work. We can't afford to tie the hands of current government or indeed future government in terms of taking decisions and making investments that are for the benefit of the economy here in this state and more importantly for the citizens in this state because quite frankly we cannot allow the current government uh, to behave in such an inept manner to put such a flawed proposition to the people and then to attempt to bully them uh, into supporting it because it won't lead to stability on the country. It will not save the euro. It will certainly not save this state. And it certainly doesn't represent the kind of hope that people need, the kind of light at the end of the tunnel. This isn't a way out of the mess. This is a re recipe for deepening our problems. OK, Michal Martin, what is, in your opinion, the single Trump argument in favour of voting yes to the treaty? Well, the single Trump argument in supporting this treaty is to ensure that we have secure, 
access to cheaper funding uh, after 2013, in the years after 2013. Uh, in 2014, for example, we will need to borrow about 18 billion plus. Um, about 10 billion for public services, uh, and, to and, and the deficit will be there then, uh, and 8 billion to repay a maturing loan. Now, we need that money. Uh, and the fundamental question is where are we going to get that money um, in 2014? Now, we either get it from the markets or we get it from the European Stability Mechanism Fund, uh, which will be the doors of which will be open to us if we pass this treaty. I want secure access to that money. I don't want any doubts about it. Uh, I don't want to be voting for an uncertain scenario post-2013. I want to make sure that we keep services as reasonably as we can in education, in health and in welfare. That's in essence what a yes vote will do for us. Because under any credible scenario, and every credible scenario, if we vote yes, we will have access to cheaper money that will cost less than if we vote no. A no okay. and an alternative to yes will mean more expensive money, uh, dearer money and less certainty about getting it. OK, uh, let's deal with that issue, uh, Joe Higgins. Uh, the reality is that under the terms of the e ESM treaty and the fiscal treaty, that if we vote no to the fiscal treaty, under the, the rules that are now being devised or almost uh, completed, we won't get a second bailout if we need it. For a start, that is not decided. The change that was made secretly in February to the European Stability Mechanism which would require all countries to sign up to the austerity treaty has not yet been enshrined in European Union law. And to enshrine that in European Union law needs a change to one of the founding treaties of the European Union, the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, Article 136. The Irish government can block, therefore, the blackmail clause by which they want to hold a big stick over the Irish people <laughs> and threaten them that they will be isolated from funding if they do not accept this austerity treaty. The other argument in response to it is this, that we are in a bailout situation, and that bailout and the conditions and the terms laid down by the Troika and being implemented are absolutely disastrous for our people. We have almost a half a million unemployed. We have a massive crisis in our health, in our education services, we have a huge attack on our living standards and a massing, massive growing in equality. So the idea that we should welcome okay. another bailout as an improvement, in fact, if there were a second bailout with the same conditions and terms, it would drive the economy, it would absolutely destroy an economy that, that we, is already uh, deeply uh, damaged. Are you saying that if we need a second bailout and, we, and we're offered one, we shouldn't bother with it? Is that what you're saying? I, I am saying that the... Another bailout, which is a bailout of bondholders and bankers in Europe, not of the Irish people, and a similar policy being implemented in Spain and in other countries in Europe, would devastate and destroy what is left of the economy. And I further challenge the government and the leader of Fianna Fáil to say how cuts of 5.7 billion, which would be necessitated by the structural deficit target in 2015, would benefit our economy. In fact, it would cause massive further crisis. Can OK, Sam. Can, yeah, can I just respond to some of that? Because, first De of all... Deal with the question of the block, that the government has the capacity to veto the implementation or the coming into power of the ESM well, treaty. Well, that, well first of all, that's, that, that's not strictly true. What's being proposed at the moment is that the ESM would be set up uh, by July of this year, uh, and that as long as... 90% um, of the funds that are being put into that uh, um, um, ESM fund can be provided by member states, well, then it will be set up. Um, so it, it is going to be set up, and Ireland can't veto that uh, uh, because we are only being asked to contribute to 1.57% of that fund. So the ESM will be set up, and rightly so. Because, uh, because Europe needs a backstop mechanism. We need to put in place a, a rescue fund, if, if you like, for countries that in the future may have difficulty raising their own funds. And hopefully Ar Ireland won't be in that category. Can I hopefully, no, the, let me finish the point. Yeah. The, uh, the government is confident that by the end of next year we'll be able to raise our own money on the markets. But it'll be certainly easier to do that if we have a backstop uh, yeah. um, like the ESM that we can access should we need it. And I think investors internationally are far more likely to buy Irish government bonds at the kind of interest rates that, that we can afford to sell them at. 
uh, uh, if there is um, a, an insurance mechanism, if you like, uh, in the form of the ESM. So the ESM is a good thing. Uh, all right. And people shouldn't, uh, you, though, people shouldn't did, paint it as, as something else. Why did the else. government agree to, to renegotiate, to the renegotiation of the ESM treaty in order to insert the gone to head clause? that if people didn't approve the fiscal treaty, they wouldn't get funding uh, under the ESM. But Why did the government agree to that? Well, it's, it's because it's a perfectly reasonable proposition. If you're, if you're putting a very large fund in place, it's not unreasonable that if a country is accessing those rescue funds, uh, that they would agree to, to spend that money responsibly. Um, that what could have been made we're term asking, of the rescue. That could have been made a term of the rescue arrangement. What we're asking people to do uh, is, is, is two things. Uh, to have uh, to make a commitment that countries won't spend more than they can afford to spend in terms of the running of their countries, to bring stability across the European Union, which, which should be welcome, and that will be applied to big countries and small. Okay, and it's in I, Ireland's I, interest that that I happens. Just, I want, I and, the second, briefly, and the second I, issue is that if countries agree to do that, they have this backstop or security mechanism um, that is yeah. a source of funding should we need it. And by the way, there is no other source uh, right, of funding so, 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 just, from the just IMF or anywhere else. One question for the clarification on this. At the time that you agreed to the insertion <coughs> of this gone to head clause in the, e clause. Just so in the ESM treaty, which question. wasn't, which was not part of the ESM treaty, which was originally agreed in July of last year. At the time that you agreed to the insertion of this clause, you knew that there was a possibility that the fiscal treaty would have to go to a referendum in Ireland. It wasn't clear at the time that it would, but you knew there was a possibility that was so. And you also knew there was a possibility that it would, the fiscal treaty would be defeated. Why did you allow that to go through since you also knew there was a possibility this would be against the interests of the country? It's not against the interests of the country. That's the point I'm making. There are two essential things that are happening in this treaty. That's the proposition. And in my view, both of them are beneficial to Ireland. The responsible budgetary management is, is in Ireland's interests and in Europe's interests and in the interest of, of the euro as a currency and, and certainly uh, having an ESM set up uh, as, uh, as an insurance mechanism should Ireland or any other country have to access it okay. also makes sense. Can I, can I just say, can I just say um, that in no way could it be considered a reasonable ask of this state to ask people to sign up for an ongoing recipe of cutbacks and austerity and to give that constitutional uh, protection. That's precisely what it is. The government have been really cynical on this issue of future funding and I have to say if it's a thing that we require for the second time emergency funding that is the loudest uh, condemnation of the policies that you have pursued. It's the most clear evidence that the austerity strategy hasn't worked. But let me say this because I think it's important that people understand the ESM, as we speak this evening, this emergency fund is not yet established. That's the fact. In order for that to be established with the firm legal footing, the government, this state, has to give it its approval. Now, you raised the question, uh, Vincent, I think very reasonably as to how the government thought in any way that it could be a good idea to link a potential emergency fund with these kind of austerity measures. I think that's a fair point. But it needs to be said that when government ministers or members of the S campaign or Fianna Fáil are saying so loudly, we won't get emergency funding, we won't get emergency funding, they are simply wrong. And they are making that argument in the full knowledge that they are wrong. They are making that argument in the full knowledge that if they are so concerned, if they are so worried about the blackmail clause, they have ample space, ample opportunity and full authority and full leverage to get rid of it. And that's okay. what they why should are, do. Why in the name of God would we want to veto a European Stability Mechanism Fund. Are we living in the real world here? No, no, that's well, a misrepresentation of Mayol. That's the of point that's being well made. You know People have said we should veto it, or we can veto it. I don't want to veto the fund. The fund is important for Ireland, and it's important for Europe. And, well, and everybody, everybody has said, from the beginning of this crisis at, at, at Eurozone level, that we needed permanent bailout mechanisms to ensure uh, a, a stable currency into the future. And remember what I said at the outset, we will need to borrow about 18 billion in 2014 after this programme expires. Aware of no, that. we may get it from the marketplace, we may not. I can't predict whether we will or not. But the, what I do know is this, I certainly look forward to the idea 
that there's a secure, stable funding mechanism there that can fund public services in Ireland in 2014 if the markets won't lend to us and or if they're going to lend to us no, no. at an unacceptable rate. This year envisaged. alone, for example, this year alone we're borrowing 15 billion in cash. We're aware what of are we that doing with have. that 15 billion? We're pumping it into education, health and welfare to keep things going. But where where is the opposition to the treaty saying we're going to get that money? The, the point what I want to ask you, and sorry. we can go on all night about this no. and saying how much I will challenge you no. to actually produce costings, detailed costings for the next five to six years beyond 2013. Let's you put out a, a, a no vote. What will it mean in terms of budget after budget, 214, 215, 216, 217, 218? I'll do the same on our side, okay? No, because Deputy the Martin, public no. are fed up with no, this kind Martin. of uh, yeah. austerity no, versus let, austerity. Let, 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 yeah. Yeah. Deputy Martin, it's you and the government that are proposing this treaty. The onus is therefore on you to say what? how this treaty, if implemented, would affect the Irish economy yeah. yes, and the Irish and people. I do that, so I now, for, 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 first, very, very briefly. Fianna Fáil is therefore agreeing with this underhanded manoeuvre no. engaged in by the Taoiseach in February when they allowed and gave the EU a gun to point at the head of the Irish people that if you do not plan this, uh, the, pass this austerity treaty, then you will not be able to access ESM no, for this. No, now, you're, you're, just you're, a moment. No, you're misrepresenting no, 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 no. You're misrepresenting my position. Don't do that. Okay. You're misrepresenting my position. Well, hold on. Just don't misrepresent my position. Let Joe finish his point. You didn't disagree with the government. No, The point that we are making is it is dishonest and it is utterly undemocratic to wave this big stick above our people to force them to vote yes when that clause can be removed and you can use the leverage of having to, you, having to have unanimity in the Treaty of the Function of the European Union to demand that. Secondly, secondly, to demand what? What do you want to, to say? To demand to that the gun no, no. is removed from the head of the Irish okay. people, that unless you pass this treaty, you will be isolated so as far as funding goes. So what you want to say is goals. you want to put the now, guns secondly, to those that want to lend to us no, no, no. education secondly, and say you, we'll only take your money if... No, I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. Can secondly, respond? Deputy yes, Martin... Yes, no, just yes. let me finish the second point oh. briefly. Secondly, Deputy Martin, you and the government have not said, based on Department of Finance figures of a structural deficit in 2015 of 3.7%, reaching the target set down by this treaty would mean a cut of 5.7 oh. billion euro and a further four or five billion to reach the debt to GDP ratio. How would that massive further austerity do anything except cause massive further crisis in our society? How can you say this leads to more stability and investment? I tell you how, because we've agreed uh, as a country to 3% to 2015, to cut our deficit to 3% to 2015, okay? So I will accept that voting yes or no to this won't affect things up to 2013, and we're signed on to get to 3% by 2015, as most sane people are. And I think we're all signed up for balanced budgets into the future as a necessary prerequisite for growth. If you want growth in the economy, it's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is certainly a pan-European stimulus, pan-European investment, and a greater role for the European Central Bank. Issues that I've called consistent Consistently far um, in the Doyle in, in my but, statements but in relation to the European Union. Now, in terms of the Commission's timeline for getting to 60% yes. of the, the, the GDP ratio, remember in the 80s we were well over 100%, and by the mid 90s we were down below 60% uh, because of economic growth, because of an export and strategic investment led approach to the economy. It is achievable. Uh, over timelines yet to be agreed, I acknowledge, but I would not try and front load at all into it, year it, 215 it, it, and 216. Well, it is absolutely okay. not achievable. It is I want not. To let Mary Lou in. Well, let Mary Lou in. Yes, Mary Lou. I think uh, Mayhall Martin's last point is very revealing, because he's he's pointed to the fact, and he's quite correct, that in the years in the run up to the 2008 crash, in fact, uh, this state would have met all of the criteria yeah. of this. Uh, treaty. So what does that tell you? It tells you that for all the bluff and bravado, the provisions of this treaty wouldn't have saved us from the scenario that unfolded well, that's here. What we also need, what we need to, what we need to bear in, in, mind, in mind also is, you know, rhetoric around investment and growth won't create one job. We need action on it. And I think we're at a fork in the road now. I think it's self-evident that the austerity policies aren't working. And let me give you one illustration of it. In 2008, we had a budgetary deficit, an exchequer deficit of 12 billion. 
Fast forward to 2011, having come through six austerity budgets, the cutbacks that people know all about. Has the budget deficit closed? No. On the contrary, it has more than doubled. So all of the evidence, it's, it's this message is resounding all across the continent, all across the globe, that the austerity strategy is not working, it's failing our people, people are out of work, people who are barely <coughs> making it, and you think that it is a smart idea to give constitutional protection to rules that would tie the hands of the state in terms of making prudent, productive investment to get people back to work, to get the economy the problem, going the again, problem, and to fund the okay. very services the problem to problem which you The problem with that statement yeah. is that uh, uh, that may well sound good in theory, but Mary Lou can't back up where, we get, where she would get the money to, uh, Sorry, uh, to support a so-called stimulus the fund. The reality is Let me do that, that, then, that, that it is no would. coincidence that, that practically every uh, US multinational in Ireland is out uh, getting involved in politics, which they normally don't do, to, uh, to, to encourage people to vote yes. It's not a coincidence that every farming organisation in the country is asking for it, that every Chamber of Commerce is asking for it. Because people who create jobs in this country, rather than talk about it, actually value the stability that this treaty can bring. Uh, and, and if people are interested in austerity, well then, maybe we should quote accurately, unlike Sinn Féin, Carl Whelan this morning, when, he's, when he said, um, if you're voting against the stability treaty because you don't like austerity, you have to understand that a no vote would be more likely to bring more austerity rather than less. And the reason why he's saying that is that if we decide to vote no here, uh, um, it is going to damage um, the, the way in which the Irish economy is perceived as a place to invest and create jobs, because rubbish. people will not be certain that is not rubbish. That is it, rubbish this, morning, this morning we launched a yes campaign with Microsoft, SAP, IBM, Fujitsu, BT, Oracle, Ericsson, HP. Are you saying to all of those S companies Vincent, that they don't understand Vincent, the consequences can I take, of this can, can we just remind, the, just no, remind no, let ourselves? Let me finish my point. No, no, no. no, 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 no you you ask Mary Lou a question, Did, now let her reply. You ask a question, let her reply. But people keep can referring just... to this as the austerity okay, treaty. But let... It isn't that. Can, can so this is about to... bringing stability. OK, you asked Mary a question, so, I'll respond. Okay, uh, can, let's go, just go, remind go, ourselves, do, do you remember the Lisbon Treaty debates? All of the same characters that you have referred to in organisations, and they're perfectly entitled to their view, let me say that up front, all of them came out and told people, vote for this, it's all about jobs. Well, now, the evidence, the stark evidence is whatever Lisbon was or wasn't it about, it about. certainly was not it about jobs. You put the direct <laughs> challenge to me in terms of where does the money come from in terms of investment for jobs and growth. Yeah. There's 5.5 billion in the National Pension Reserve Fund, in their discretionary, discretionary fund. There's matched funding to be gotten from the European Investment Bank. You know this, Simon. The government yeah. know this. Well, the have, difficulty no, is that you have good. not prioritised investment in jobs, investment in services. You wrongly think that you can cut and you hack your and way you out of this. Government. Government. And, and you can't. And so this, you haven't answered the question in terms of current funding requirements from 2014 onwards. I mean, we do need 18 point billion odd billion that we have to borrow in 2014. No, we either get it from the markets, who will either lend to us at rates that we can pay or we can't pay. If we don't have that, we have to have some other alternative. Really and the European stability mechanism represents... I, 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 I know that things so just think we need... I do think, I do think we need... I think we need an answer to I, that I, very I, basic I know question. I know I because answer, because, yeah, because yeah, my contention is that the alternatives um, to what's on offer. Uh, in other words, if we vote no, I think bond yields will immediately go up and I think access to the market will be more difficult. Uh, and I, I, I'm not sure, if, you, if you're suggesting the IMF is the alternative, it's very clear from existing arrangements the IMF money would be 3% um, above what they would borrow from, whereas the ASM is at cost I, and it may not be available. I, I, so I do think we need to get a very specific it, 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 answer no, no, to where that's, that's, that's the current funding will come let, let, let in 2014. Yeah. Deputy Martin, mm -hmm. both you and the Minister, first of all, the onus is on you oh, to no, explain. Andrew, oh, no, 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 hold You're on saying to the Irish no, no, people, vote no. There's an obligation no, on you, Joe, to spell out the consequences, the consequences of that. Hold on, hold on. It's not good enough to say the onus is on me. Or, no, or, or you didn't let it's me... It's on all of us, to be clear. You didn't let me finish the sentence. Right. The onus is on you to explain the economic effects of what you want enshrined in law and in the Constitution in this country. Now, you said that the deficit has to be reduced by to 3%. In fact, in 2015, if your treaty gets true, the structural deficit would have to be 0.5 per cent. According to, according, hold on, according to 
the rules laid down in the austerity treaty, that would mean on current predictions cuts of 5.7 billion. It's totally and no, Vincent, can I answer that no, question? Just, just, no, no, just a second. Joe, you have twice... Joe, you have twice... No, 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 the government and the leader of Fianna Fáil will not answer I the will. fundamental and question. I have that question. Did hold you on, answer your on, question first? Because you have no answers the, in terms of how the country no, will be funded no. in the future. Do that's you, the, do, that's do, the, do you that is the huge hole no, in, in, in the no, no side. No, you no have minister. no answers. No, we, no, no, we, no we'll there start, is an answer. We, I, I, I have an alternative, well, absolutely. Please, please but, explain it then. But no, I won't let you get away, first of all, with evading the question of the impact of what you are proposing. Do you understand that the Department of Finance has predicted a structural deficit of 3.7% in 2015, mm -hmm. yeah. and to bring that down to 0.5% would involve cuts of 5.7 billion. Okay. Right? Right? Do no. You don't have can to do it in one year. Tell us how that would Joe, bring stability Joe, and Joe, jobs we'll to the Irish people. Could I just ask you this? Can I just ask you this? One way or another, there's going to be austerity, uh, and we can deal with that uh, later on in the programme. But just deal with the question. If we say no to the fiscal treaty <coughs> and we are thereby deprived of a second bailout should we need it in 2014, where do we get the money? Well, can we first of all say no, d that a second bailout along the lines envisaged by the government and Fianna Fáil would absolutely kill what is left right. of our economy. Right. Okay, no, just just hold on now. Let's 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 not, not narrow this down to the parameters well, that feel well, fallen the government want. Issue, okay, people need austerity. Austerity, yeah. Europe-wide, is a catastrophic failure. It yes. is destroying let's society Europe-wide. Let's, Europe let's agree that that's so. so. But and deal then, with and, the question and, and where will we get the money? Th therefore, let's agree that a further bailout, as envisaged by them would kill the patient altogether, yeah. right? Well, we do need a bailout, but a bailout of ordinary people and society as opposed to bondholders, sure. bankers, and etc. Sure. Bond I already say, being bailed out, so that's I, a say, a separate issue. I say that there is immense wealth in our society, that if we had a progressive wealth tax, for example, and a tax also on the higher earning echelons of our society, billions of euro extra would be brought in which could then go into productive investment, particularly in public right, infrastructure, is, 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 to create... Just, Joe, just Joe, a moment, please, just, now, please, no, 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 not just tens of thousands just tell of jobs just tell us, no. Joe, Joe, not just a moment. Just please answer the question. In 2014, we'd probably need in the region of 12 to 15 billion 18. to keep the show on the road. And where would we get it if, if because we vote no to the fiscal treaty, we're Vincent, denied can I, can a I second bail? If, 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 you, if, if you keep narrowing the debate, down to this obsession with one year and one deficit, we will never get out of this hole. Because the these policies are what are being blended all over but Europe your with disastrous okay. consequences. Even accepting so more this austerity, obsession I, I whatever, say, where would we get the money in I, 2014? I, I, I say a range of issues. I say a progressive taxation on wealth and a progressive taxation on high we get uh, incomes billion, over 100,000. We get 15 other, billion overnight from the, a progressive taxation, the other thing, are you saying that? The other thing I say, Vincent, is that the Irish people should vote no, and that that would be a call right across Europe for a fundamental <laughs> change in financial Vincent. policy to break the power of these bondholders and bankers who are holding the people of Europe to ransom. OK. And for a, a, public, a finance system that is in public just, ownership just, just and investment for our people. OK, very briefly, because we're going solution. to go to well, an ad break the, then. Yeah. The first thing to say is that uh, the government now <laughs> is conceding almost that we're heading into the terrain of looking for a second so-called bailout and emergency funding. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. Yeah. Let's, Well, I, I think on the basis of their policies, that's probably the case. And you're right. In that scenario, we will need to access emergency funding. Where you're wrong is to keep making the assertion that we won't get funded from the proposed European bailout mechanism. We've talked about the veto already. But bear in mind, the stated purpose of that emergency mechanism is to protect 
uh, the stability of the Eurozone area. So, in other words, it would mean that legally speaking, politically speaking, economically speaking, to say to this state, get lost, you're not getting a penny, would go against the very purpose of the yeah. bailout okay. itself. Okay. In addition to uh, that bailout, you have... the same problem okay. that Joe right. has. No, no, no I don't. I am answering the question. Now, you haven't answered now. the question. We're going to take a break, and we'll resume on this very point immediately after the break. Join us then. Welcome back. Let's stay with the issue of what would happen if we vote no to the fiscal treaty. Uh, Simon, is it believable that we would be refused uh, funding under a second guarantee if we were to vote no, given that we have been so meticulously obedient in adherence to all the terms of the first bailout arrangement, and given also the chaos that would be caused throughout Europe if, we, uh, if this country went into default by being denied a second bailout, given that we owe probably the banks probably have about a hundred billion uh, from the ECB, that uh, we have a bailout of about fifty billion, and of course there's this issue of the promissory, promissory notes of about twenty eight billion. Is it believable, given our uh, the, the responsibility that the governments have had in adhering to the memorandum of understanding, and the chaos that would be caused by a default here, that we'd be refused a bailout? I think the answer to that is, is to say, is it believable that we could go back to our partners in the European Union having rejected access to a stability fund that, that is set up for that very purpose, to give the kind of security and backstop mechanism that fragile economies like Ireland need in terms of confidence and in terms of access should we need it? Is it believable that we would go back to our, to our colleagues um, around a, a table in Brussels or Strasbourg and say, look, we've, we actually decided not to be part of that, even though it was set up for this very purpose, but we want money anyway, when other countries have signed up to it and have signed up to the treaty that goes with it. So, there I mean, it is... An, since I think it is important. In I think it's no very, other country a referendum. I think and it, people understand that, the, that there, there, isn't, there isn't popular support for most of what the EU does. And that because we have a referendum in Ireland, there is at least a possibility we'll vote no. But, and European leaders will understand that. But given the meticulous way that we have adhered to the terms of the Memorandum of Understanding and the chaos that would be ensued if we went into default, it's not believable, but, sure but, it isn't, but, but Vincent, that why would, would why would we possibly take that risk? Here we have a treaty that is tailor-made okay. for Ireland. But do and, and for other... Please let me answer the question now. Uh, um, that is tailor-made for a country like Ireland to ensure that, that, that future governments here uh, budget in a responsible way that ensures, ensures that there isn't a boom-and-bust economy in Ireland in the future, that we have steady growth that is sustainable, and that we also have access to a stability fund at low interest rates, which, which we may or may not need at some stage in the future. Our prediction is that we probably won't need it, but it's certainly useful to have it there in the background. I cannot allow... The, the kind of debate that we had earlier before the break, where essentially the no side are trying to hoodwink, pe hoodwink people into, uh, um, uh, into accepting that, that we are somehow going to find money from somewhere because Sorry. we're going to need it so badly, when actually it is very clear, whether it's from the IMF or from anybody else, that the very purpose of the ESM is to give us that facility now. If we choose to reject it, okay, well, then we, are Sorry, outside, then, then, then we are outside of the now, pale in relation to that yeah. issue. And that creates a vulnerability for Ireland okay. that this economy just does not let, need let, at the moment. Let, let I just want to make a very simple point on that question. I think why would we take the risk is a very fair question. And it may, no, be, I, the, I it may be the case, to answer your question, it may be the case that they would provide funding in some set of circumstances, in some context. But I don't know what that scenario is. And that's what the no vote creates. It creates an uncertain scenario. I think almost immediately bond yields would, would go up, by the way, if there was a no vote in Ireland. What does that mean? It probably means it would make it more difficult for us to borrow from the markets at the end of 2013. That's what it would be one of the most immediate impacts of a no vote. Then we would have to go looking for money, either from the European mechanisms or um, from, from the IMF. And, and, and the IMF is by no means clear because we're way above the borrowing ceiling that the IMF normally lends to countries. They're doing it because they're doing it in concert with the EU and the ECB. So the alternative is we vote yes for certainty and secure access to cheaper money. And remember, if we can get even an interest rate that's 1% lower 
uh, you're looking at a billion per year down the line. So to come to you know, you're looking at a much more <coughs> significant impact. The no vote just creates an uncertain insecure okay, can scenario, I put another, which I think is dangerous, and we don't, need, we don't need to take that can chance, I put another question? because we're just basically signing up to rules that we've signed up to a long time ago, and, that we, and I think that are proportionate and reasonable That's if a, large sums of money are being lent uh, to countries to fund public man, services. Man, uh, um, <clears throat> there, is, there is a possibility that a lot of people will vote no to the fiscal treaty on the ground that they were given no say on the issue of the bank bailout in uh, 2008, they were given no say on the question of the uh, uh, abrogation of sovereignty in, in November of 2010, and they were made promises in the last election, promises that, they, uh, and as a consequence, they believed there would be a radical change of policy, and they now find that exactly the same policies conducted by this present government as was conducted by Fianna Fáil. And they may wish to assert their own sovereignty by now availing of this really first opportunity to say, no, we're not having any more of this. Okay, they may. If people want to take that decision, they need to examine the consequences of that decision. Because what is a bailout programme? The bailout programme was essentially signing up to a four-year programme uh, and to borrow money to underpin that four-year programme of getting our deficit down, of balancing expenditure with revenue. Uh, the alternative to the bailout programme was excessive and punitive uh, interest rates from the market. So the, in my view, it's pragmatic and sensible that we have a bailout programme and that Europe had the capacity to put a bailout programme together. Benson, I wouldn't undermine... Benson, I, I, don't buy into the, I don't buy into the argument, by the way. Uh, that it's all, all wrong and all bad in the, in, in the worst Eurozone crisis we've had and global crisis since 1929, that Europe, at least we had an entity called the European Union that had the capacity to come together collectively, pool its resources and enable programmes okay. and, and, and funding so, so, programmes so, so, that can enable us to keep public you, services yeah, yeah. going, people unlike what happened in the 30s and 40s say, when there was a complete collapse of all that. Labour in the last election <clears throat> did so on the basis of a Fine Gael promise to seek a write-down of the debt. And also, they, people voted Labour because they were impressed by the, the defiance of Eamon Gilmore, Frankfurt's way or Labour's way. And yet, when you got into government, according to Andy Kenny, there was, you didn't even ask for a write-down of the debt. Indeed. And people may be utterly dismayed by all of that, by broken promises, and feel that we, since you are the people pro proposing well, this, they should vote against it. Well, Vincent, we've had this debate uh, uh, at length on numerous times in your show, but I think people are tuning in this evening to try and listen to a debate about the Stability Treaty. Uh, and one of the great challenges of the, uh, of the yes side, if you like, for the next month will be to try and get people to focus on the, the question that is being asked and the consequences of a yes versus a no for the future of our country. Never mind party politics. This is about the future of the country in terms of its capacity to grow on the basis of a stable platform. And it is not all bad news in Ireland at the moment. Last week, for the first time in four years, Ireland is creating more jobs than we were losing. We have seen 40,000 people come off the live register in the first quarter of this year. We've seen a lot of people join the live register also. But there are positive things happening in Ireland, and that will continue. And this stability treaty isn't going to solve all of our problems, like I say. We do need to get growth into the economy. That is part of our plans in terms of budget management in the future and meeting the targets that are being set for us. But the idea that we would take a leap into the dark to throw Ireland back into the eye of the storm in terms of uncertainty about how we're going to fund this country will put that project back significantly and make Excellent. life much more difficult, not just for the government, but for everybody in Ireland. And that is, why, that is why, if you want certainty in relation to where Ireland is going, albeit a difficult journey, well, then the only way to vote is yes. Vincent, in the spirit of what Simon suggests, let's turn our attention to the question at hand. Let's make it very clear to people watching at home. On the 31st of May, you are not being asked to accept or reject an emergency funding mechanism at European level. What you are being asked is to vote on this particular treaty, which is all about putting the brakes on the capacity to borrow and to invest in the economy. There are certainties that will arise from this treaty, and I grant you that, but they're not certainties around stability. There's the certainties around uh, deepening the recession that we're in, certainties around the fact that the state will concede further powers to the European Commission, to the European Court of Justice. You have the certainty <coughs> that you will find yourself in a situation, not just in the here and now, but into the future, where the state will render itself totally useless no, in not. respect of making the kinds of investment that citizens who now, despite your rhetoric, Minister, who don't have work,
who are suffering uh, cutbacks across the whole range of services that we know Mary about. Lou, you're promising that's, 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 can't deliver. And I, I'm not no promising anything. No, no, no. Lou, no, no, no. no. Hold is, on a second. Hold on a second. The brazenness with which you pursue this is truly astonishing. There is no question that we will be refused emergency funding. And I think you know that. You also know that the fund that you keep talking about is not yet so, established. So, sorry, so can, I no you, can I ask you, can I ask you, Minister, Minister, on what terms Minister, do you think, hold on. what terms do you think the loans would be given? Even well, in the emergency, can, can, you're saying they won't, they, they'll have to give us the money. And can I in tell what, you, on what terms are they going to give us the money? And can I tell you? Are you going to say they're going to, they're, they're going to do it in a different context no, no, to this treaty? let me tell you, I mean, irrespective, you're people, irrespective of where you would source the funding, be it the IMF, be it a rollover in terms of this existing EFSF, it's like an alphabet soup, or be it in, in respect of this new funding. The terms will be absolutely horrific for the people who live here. None of these are charitable organisations. They intervene in an emergency, in an emergency situation with the clear and stated objective, not of being kind to Ireland, but of securing the, the stability of Europe. Of and the utter, the the utter that nonsense that. that you are, you're clearly not prepared to, to, okay, to yeah, argue yeah, the toss on the treaty. The ESM will lend at cost. Well, that's one of the most important aspects of the European Stability Mechanism Fund. The IMF actually wouldn't. Uh, the IMF would lend at about 3%, um, and it would charge a 3% premium on what it's currently lending and at what it borrowed from, at least. I mean, this is very also, real, Mary Lou. You yeah, can't, you can't say to me. I met a teacher, I met a teacher the other night, right? How do we give a commitment to that teacher and teacher that we, we want to try and keep things at a level pace and keep things sustainable in education and health? Well, we have to be, no, we have to be concrete. We have, well, that's what the treaty, no, but the treaty gives that. us a structure. That's what you're the treaty gives us a structure on the way back to growth. It gives us a definitive, secure access to funding at cost. You're saying throw ourselves to the markets or throw ourselves to the whims of other people in the event of us voting no. It's just too uncertain. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, Deputy Martin, we are losing teachers and we are losing yeah, health we staff and others to austerity. We're going to lose more now, if Minister we Coveney no, has the point to, I make. Minister Coveney has the nerve to say that a no vote would throw us into the dark. Europe economically, Minister, is in the dark. And 166 billion more in austerity, which would be the implications Europe wide of this treaty will create further devastating crisis, more than even the 25 million Look, unemployed in the present people, day. Ju ju just a moment now, ju 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 the just a moment. Of let, let me finish, no, 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 let me finish the point, please, anything, now. Yeah. Let me finish the point. So, so you're trying to put the onus on those who are opposed. In fact, it's continuing austerity as usual and worse that will be an absolute nightmare ongoing for the people of Europe. Therefore, we need to break with the present financial system. So you are and we, take, we need no to vote. break well, the dictatorship of the you markets that Michal Martin has used no as an example no. why you should vote. Yes. So By I, the can't way, the, I can't you, break the dictatorships of the markets tomorrow morning. You can't no, either. But we, we, can have to the real world. we can start. I agree with you on one thing. I agree that the European Union has to up its gear in terms of, 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 of a pan-European expansion programme, in terms of a fiscal union, in terms of more role for the European Central Bank, and indeed that there's two sides to this coin. There's actually getting budgets balanced, which ultimately give markets confidence and which give funders confidence that countries are going to survive this in the long term. And secondly, we do need investment. We do need a European Central Bank. I would argue that we need euro Look, bonds, that Europe, collectively Europe should pool its resources you, you, and you, borrow you, collectively you, as Europe. Hold on. All of that is right. All of that can happen, actually. You, you, and the treaty doesn't exclude you, any of that. Your billionaire speculators who dominate the finance market can't give a fig about an austerity treaty if their money in Spain or in yeah, Greece okay. or in Portugal is threatened. Therefore, you cannot guarantee stability. They could be in a tizzy in three weeks' time if no, they no. think that's for the threat. One thing I do now, know, Joe, I the way, yes vote gives me a greater it, 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 um, it, it, access, a more definite and, access and no to a no vote. vote. And no yeah. vote, yeah. vote, yeah. yeah. vote yeah. starts a challenge to this system. Can I just challenge? Why is Michal Martin agreeing with the Minister for Finance in his disgraceful threat today to make the budget worse in December? I don't, don't think the budget's going to be worse in December. Look, I don't agree that the budget will be worse next December. But I think it'll be. I, I want an answer. Yeah, but what do you think okay. to the Minister of Finance saying? What I want is 2014, Joe. I'd like to get an answer in 2014. Sorry. The budget, the budget will have to be <clears throat> worse next year if we, if we um, uh, make a decision that results in, in it making it more difficult to get growth into the Irish economy, to create jobs oh and so on. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and, uh, do and my ears the, deceive me. The, the people. No, the, the, people have a right to know the consequences for the country of, of a yes vote versus a no vote. And we have a responsibility to inform them.
Mm -hmm. And that's why we have debates like this. And unfortunately, people like Mary Lou are simply misleading people when they are saying that we're going to get money from somewhere. We don't I know do. from who or under what conditions Benson. or at what interest rates, but we will get the money we need from somewhere because we'll be in such a desperate state that Europe will have to bail us out. Instead, what the yes side is proposing is that we have sat down as countries, 25 countries, we've put in place a stability mechanism around responsible budgeting and a, a very large fund to allow countries that have difficulties in terms of raising their own money through the markets to do that by accessing money at cost, as Michal has outlined. And that at least, nobody can say with absolute certainty what's going to happen in the future. But at least we can take a decision that reduces the risk of, of potential uncertainty around future funding in our country. And that's Benson. essentially what this debate is can about. I, people shouldn't be misled by other people. That, by way, just so we're absolutely... I've been very clear in terms of where the potential monies might come from if we need a, a second emergency so-called bailout. I spelled it out for you. The ESM or the Which IMF or a rollover of the, the ESM FSF. Isn't open to you know, the ESM won't be you open know, in the manner you know if you all of that. We you know all of we that. Don't. You also know that you have the capacity to take the offending clause out of the ESM. We've been over all of that yes. ground. Yeah. But, but it I, is an absolute they don't joke. Have, they, 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 the capacity to veto the ESM, perhaps, no, not to renegotiate really it. No, 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 to make it lawful. Michal, finally, we're running out of time. Michal, finally, Michal, finally, can I ask you this question? Yeah. If you can't persuade your former deputy leader and your entire Fianna Fáil backbench to support this fiscal treaty, how can you expect to be able to persuade the country at large? By force of argument, I'm very happy to, to, to go to the people and say to the people that the most effective alternative and, and way forward, in my view, is to vote yes. People are entitled to different viewpoints. People have different viewpoints. That's as natural in life in every family that's watching in tonight. They'll have different views watching in. Uh, my obligation and the obligation of my party to the country is really to do what's in the best interests of the people of Ireland and above all those in our classrooms, right. in our hospitals, teachers and workers. That's what I'm interested in. Okay. And I want to secure we'll be following funding through on in 214 this debate to pay on for the tonight programme starting at 11 o'clock. We hope you can join us then and see you at that time. Bye-bye. Thank you.